Things First is sponsored by Ram Trucks, built to serve. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to First Things First. I'm Jenna Wolf. Nick Wright is beaming. Brandon Marshall knows Jenna, why. Jenna, how many, how many of us are why. out here right now? Jenna, how many people There's are four here? Four of us. Four of us. Four Nick. of us. <laughs> Four of us. The yeah. one, two, three, yeah. four. One, Might be the theme of the what day, gentlemen. Five, 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 five. All the morning. What happened to the all oh. week? Oh. All oh. week, Wilds. Oh. oh, all morning, oh. all week. Oh. All week. Might be all, all right. month. Well, congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're going to celebrate a whole week. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, maybe all maddening, year. Brandon, 2020 has sucked, <laughs> man, so you got to take well, the wins no where you can find them. <laughs> he no longer has an That's undefeated true. Chiefs season to hang his hat on, so we are going to hang our proverbial hats on the Lakers right now. What didn't happen in Game 5 happened with Gusto in Game 6. After three months Gusto. in the bubble, the Lakers are the last team standing thanks to LeBron James. LeBron once again set the tone early last night. Lakers used a monster first half to pull away from the heat. They never were in this one, Miami. Lakers take home the title. That is number 17. LeBron takes home finals MVP. That is number four for him. Here is a very relieved LeBron James. It don't matter where it is. If you win a championship, a bubble, Miami, uh, you know, Golden State, it, it doesn't matter. <laughs> When you, when you get to this point, it's, it's, it's one of the greatest feelings in the world for a basketball player to be able to win at the highest level. All right, Nick. Uh, I, I, yeah, I'm just going to just give us your reaction. What was your reaction to LeBron <laughs> and the Lakers winning what you knew they were going to win uh, late last night? Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm just shocked anyone expected any different. And by the way, a lot of people did. I mean, the LeBron's going to LA for the movies. That, that was a good one. LeBron's entered yeah. the Jordan as a Wizards phase of his career. That one made me chuckle. I think my favorite one was, I think my favorite one though was, LeBron is ruining the Lakers young core in chemistry in the pursuit of Anthony Davis. How's that working out? And the thing is this, what I'm most surprised by is that people are surprised by this. Why would anyone have ever expected anything different? LeBron James went to the Miami Heat. They had not won a playoff series in four years upon his arrival. By year two, they were champions. LeBron James went back to the Cleveland Cavaliers. They hadn't been to the playoffs in the previous four years after his departure. By year two, they were champions. LeBron James went to the Los Angeles Lakers, who had not played in a playoff game for six years. And by year two, they were champions. This is what LeBron James does. Takes franchises who are nowhere near competing for a title, who haven't, who, whose, whose best days are far, far behind, or in Cleveland's case, never existed, and within around 700 days of his arrival, they're throwing a parade, or as the Lakers will have to, throw a virtual parade. That's what Brandon, the greatest player of his era or any era does, and he just proved it once again in this unprecedentedly odd NBA season that just came to a close. Well, I mean, let's take it a step farther. It's, it's, it's not just an odd NBA season. It's a, it's a odd year. It's a terrible year for everyone in the world. And that's the first thing I thought about when I saw that confetti drop. I thought about, you know, a year ago, them going after AD. And you got to remember, he wanted AD his first year in L.A. It just didn't work out. Yep. So the anxiety and the toil of, around getting AD was a lot. And then you go to, you know, this entire, the, the beginning of this year, them being in the middle of racial tension, not racial tension, but social injustice in China. The Lakers was in the middle of that. Kobe passes away. That rocked not only the NBA to the core, but the LA Lakers to its core. So you gotta think about how this, this entire year played out. Ahmaud Aubrey, Breonna Taylor, uh, George Floyd, racial tension soaring, 
Then there's a restart. There's a reboot. Who's going to play? Who's not going to play? Should the players go back to the NBA season? Like the, the amount of pressure on these guys going into the into the bubble, it was unbelievable. So that's the first thing I thought about when I saw that confetti coming down was how they were able to manage, how they were able to lead and do this yep. in the middle of all of this stuff going on in 2020 and going back to the end of 2019. There was a lot of teams that wasn't prepared for this moment. There was three teams that was ready. The Celts, that was the, the Heat, and that was the Lakers. And that's a testament to everyone in that organization because a lot of people broke. There was people on that team, Dwight Howard, who was struggling, didn't want to come back to the bubble. I mean, didn't want to go to the bubble, yep. who talked openly about how hard it was. So this is a tremendous feat. Um, hats off to the Lakers. Hats off to, to the Miami Heat. I mean, we didn't get a chance to talk about this because we, we didn't have a show this weekend. But come on, man, game five. Think about Jimmy Butler. Man, that was a great display of basketball. That was a thriller. I just want to say thank you to the Miami Heat and the Lakers for giving us something good in 2020. Yep. I mean, I, I thought 98% of that was excellent, Brandon. The hats off to the, the, the Heat. I mean, they played terrible. Well, I'm not going to sit here and say, like, the Heat were, were, were... That was not an interesting game. They won their game. championship you can say in that game the Lakers, five. Okay, that yeah, that sure. Hey, man, that were they, just were, like, were I, they really? I, I felt were a little really disappointed supposed to be the way that they came out last. <laughs> yeah, they yeah. were. No, they, they were. They were overmatched. They were, they overmatched. Did, uh, they were certain. Yeah, they were overmatched. It's fine, but they didn't. They just that that last game was just kind of brutal. It was good defense by good defense by the Lakers. Nick, I, I want to bring up LeBron's post game comments. He started talking about respect. Palinka wanted his respect. Uh, Vogel yeah. wanted it, needs his respect, and he needed his respect. Yeah. I thought it was very interesting. And, and every every time he wins a championship, he says something interesting. He had, you know, Cleveland, this is for you. But then remember his Heat championships when he, he his kid from Akron um, speech when he said, mm -hmm. "I can't worry about what everyone else says about me." This seemed to be the polar opposite of that. What was your takeaway on him demanding respect at, uh, after the championship? Well, the the takeaway was. Listen, LeBron sees and hears everything, and especially this year because he's not in the zero dark 23 mode or whatever he used to call it. And this man who has put together a decade of pure dominance unseen in NBA history since Bill Russell was doing it when there were eight teams just saw the entire media after a brilliant 40-13-7 and seven in game five play the same old hits of is he does he have the killer instinct should he have taken the shot did lebron make the right play is spoiler alert folks out there to my friends jay williams and others if lebron made it it's the right play we got 15 plus years of evidence for it so that's what he's talking about he's talking about the fact that jimmy butler for a night in game five was lebron and to his credit he was and you know what it did to him? It made him a non-factor in game six. It was so exhausting. LeBron's done that every year for 15 years. That th there is somehow still a nightly referendum on how this guy plays. When the answer is better than anybody ever. More consistent than anybody ever. Longer at a higher level than anybody ever. So I do think there was, geez guys, Put some damn respect on my name because nobody's ever done what I'm doing. And, the, Jenna, the revisionist history that's going to happen as far as, oh, he wasn't doubted. He was. Wilds, I love you. But I saw you roll your eyes when I said uh, one of the narratives was he's entered the Jordan phase of his career. I don't remember. Look the, up the I articles never remember the after he tore his groin. Look up his, the articles after he tore his groin when he came back and said, I'm activating playoff mode, and they didn't get it into gear. Read it. Read the articles or maybe talk to some of your friends you used to do television with because some of them said it. So, like, there's it, that was all there, Jenna, and LeBron's just reminding right. America the one thing you've been able to count on this last decade is LeBron James is going to play in the last NBA game of the season, and he's going to remind everyone who the best player alive is.
All right, well, the Lakers take a 28-point halftime lead last night and on their way to a franchise-tying 17th NBA title. Nick Wright is very happy about that. We have so much more to discuss about this game and this, this series. we got to take a turn, though. Talk about Dak Prescott and the devastating injury he suffered yesterday. What does this mean for him now, and where does this leave the Cowboys? We discuss all angles next on First Things First.